Morning San Antonio starts right now. Now at 4.30, new details about the arrest of a murder suspect. Sarah Coast is live with how investigators were able to track him down. After New Hampshire, three Democratic candidates have a full steam ahead, but the field is still wide open. I'm Andrew Dimbert in Washington with the latest on the race for 2020. And a live look outside with live cam. Much different today than yesterday, which is good news for the morning commute. We'll check in with Mike and get your forecast. Good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is February 13th, and I don't know about you, but I had to walk out to the truck real quick and decide, do I wear a coat? If I'm wearing a coat, what kind of coat am I wearing today? Not a raincoat. You didn't need a raincoat. No, didn't need a raincoat. It did clear out and turn out to be beautiful yesterday. But you might need a light jacket. It's a little bit chilly out there this morning. And, and it's going to cool down more as the morning rolls on. So we're in the about uh, mid to upper 40s right now, mm -hmm. and we'll make it down to the uh, kind of lower 40s today. So, But when I walked outside, I don't know about you guys, it was just still. Yeah. It was quiet. It was still clear skies. Which and I, I love. I swear I sort of smelled spring flowers already <laughs> here in the downtown area. Is that even possible for mid-February? I mean, I think you need to go to the doctor. I don't. It's very possible. <laughs> I could be having a stroke. I don't know. Who knows? I know nothing's blooming in my yard, so but that's not news. Yeah. So. <laughs> anyway, um, it is going to feel like spring over the weekend. Today is going to feel more like February. Uh, we're going to have temperatures actually on the cool side throughout the rest of the afternoon as well as tomorrow. 48 right now, 45 Bulverde, 40 in comfort. There is just a hint of a wind chill, not much out there. And so with the uh, clear skies, dry air and light wind, temperatures will continue to drop down. So again, I'm going for uh, low 40s today and then we uh, this morning, I should say, and then we warm up nicely uh, later on today. Mold is on the low side. That's the only the only thing that showed up, of course, that rain yesterday washed a lot of the uh, allergens out of the atmosphere. I think we're going to be dropping down to right around 43 degrees here in town, which means some upper 30s in parts of the hill country. So, yeah, that jacket might lean a little toward the heavier side. And then later on today, just mid to upper 50s, so it is going to stay on the cool side. We had another front move on through here and uh, wind out of the northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. It's going to be very cold tomorrow morning. Good looking day again tomorrow the weekend. Bit milder, maybe not as pretty, but I think overall fairly nice. Another big cold front next week. Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now on this pre Valentine's morning. Here's Officer Nick Solis. Hey, good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Hope everyone's having a great start to their Thursday morning. Well, out, now, out there right now, there's no accidents, but we do have some construction around the city. Uh, when I was driving in today, I did see some construction here. If you're going eastbound I-10, the off ramp to Crossroads and eastbound Northwest Loop 410, there was some construction vehicles there. They actually had that whole uh, off ramp shut off, but usually in the past it, it kind of moves by now going more 410 eastbound. They shut it down by 5 a.m. or so, so we'll keep that up there and I'll keep you updated on that. We also have this construction, I-37 and Loop 410 all through 47, 37 going southbound towards 410. There's construction. Uh, hopefully that clears before rush hour. Other than that, no accidents right now. Mark Leslie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. New details this morning on a story we have been following closely. The person who allegedly shot and killed a San Antonio Independent School District teacher is behind bars this morning. Amy Sebron was shot at the beginning of the month at a Northwest Side apartment complex. Sarah Coast is live at Public Safety Headquarters after the man was charged for the local teacher's murder was arrested last night. Sarah? Good morning, Mark and Leslie. Well, that man is now being charged for murder and assault with a deadly weapon. That man is 25 year old David Don Juan. Police believe he is responsible for killing SAISD teacher Amy Sebron on February 1st at the park at Wall Street Apartments. That's an 11,000 block of Wall Street near Vance Jackson and Hebner. Police say Don Juan allegedly knocked on the 33 year old teacher's apartment door and opened fire on her and a man in the apartment. That's what the male victim told police. That man was also critically wounded in the shooting, police say. Don Juan was tracked down by police through surveillance video. He was arrested yesterday on the northeast side near Perrin Beidle and 410. Cell phone records put Don Juan at the apartment the day of the slaying. Police say Don Juan didn't cooperate with investigators Wednesday night, but police say that they're still trying to figure out the relationship between Sebron and Don Juan. And right now, the motive is not clear. Live from Public Safety Headquarters, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. 
Thank you, Sarah. Happening this morning, the city of San Antonio and the Center for Disease Control and Prevention is holding a news conference in regards to the coronavirus. Okay, Sent 12 asked several sources about whether they could tell us if there is a confirmed case here in San Antonio. We were told they could neither confirm or deny it. The news conference will be held at 10 a.m. to give us an update on the coronavirus in San Antonio. We will have a crew there at this morning's press conference and we'll give you, of course, latest information as we get it. As concerns over the coronavirus continue, the virus could also impact Fiesta and the tradition of collecting Fiesta medals. Monarch Trophy Studio, where most medals are designed here in San Antonio, say the majority of the medals used are made in China, where some factories have remained closed due to coronavirus. And according to Monarch uh, owner Charlie Drago, that means that Fiesta may have fewer medals this year. In your morning headlines, big battles to come for Democratic candidates looking to take down President Trump in November. Senator Bernie Sanders has a narrow lead after the first two party races, while Mayor Pete Buttigieg is right on his heels. ABC's Andrew Dimbert is in Washington with a look at this still divided field. After the New Hampshire primary, it's Bernie Sanders leading the Democratic pack by a hair. But ahead of the Nevada caucuses, the Culinary Union, one of the most influential voting groups in the state, launched a campaign against him, saying he wants to end health care for workers. Uh, and in fact, many of the unions are strongly supporting of the Medicare for All single payer system. Now, Mayor Pete Buttigieg, who came in second in New Hampshire and claimed his own victory in Iowa, is sharpening his attacks on Sanders. I don't think that uh, uh, even progressives uh, really want to be in a world where uh, we can't keep our promises. As others attack him, controversial right-wing radio host and recent Medal of Freedom recipient Rush Limbaugh fired off anti-gay comments targeting the former mayor. A gay guy, 37 years old, loves kissing his husband on debate stages. Can you see Trump have fun with that? Back on the trail, Amy Klobuchar, who placed a surprising third in New Hampshire, is reintroducing herself to voters. Hello, America. Waiting in the wings, billionaire and former New York City mayor Michael Bloomberg shaking up the race while shaking off criticism. What do you say to Democrats who argue that you're trying to buy this election? I'm not trying to buy the election. Uh, we've been at this for 10 weeks, and the best ways to communicate in 10 weeks is through something like mass media, through television and social media. Next up for the candidates, the Nevada caucuses and Democratic officials there said that they are working around the clock to make sure they avoid the issues we saw in the Iowa caucuses. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. Attorney General William Barr has agreed to testify before the House Judiciary Committee in March. He was asked about at least three main issues, overruling prosecutors on the Roger Stone sentencing, the arrangement of Rudy Giuliani to give information on Ukraine, and the recalled nomination of Jesse Liu, who was in charge of the U.S. Attorney's Office in Washington. According to the panel chairman, Jerry Nadler, these developments raise grave questions about Barr's leadership. Two former Ohio State University football players are scheduled to appear in court today to face charges of kidnapping and rape. Defensive backs Amir Reap and Jason Wint, both 21, are accused of sexually assaulting a woman February 4th at the players' shared apartment. Both players were dismissed from the team yesterday morning. Well, it's going to be a Valentine's Day heartbreaker for some in Europe after Facebook canceled the launch of a new dating app there. The release of the app was originally scheduled for today. The app was canceled after authorities in Ireland raided Facebook's offices in Dublin. The Irish Data Protection Commission said Facebook had not provided an assessment of how data would be protected. No word on when the Facebook dating feature will now be released for European countries. Right now, it is 438, 48 degrees. Are you constantly fighting over the thermostat at work? <laughs> it's actually hilarious because we do that. And that, yes. is, that is our life here, people. Yeah. Still to come, simple things you can do that could make a big difference. After the break, why the Sheriff's Fire Department uh, is down a truck and they, are war they have a warning for all drivers. And live cam giving us a look outside. We're in for a couple nice days. A little bit cool, but beautiful weather in store. Mike has details coming up. The Shirts Fire Department out one of its platform trucks after it was involved in an accident early yesterday morning. Fortunately, no one was hurt, but the truck itself was badly damaged. It was the first of two trucks that are normally used to shield first responders when they're working accidents on I-35. That's what they were doing early yesterday morning after another 18-wheeler jackknifed. 
Not even a truck that large with flashing lights in the rain was able to slow the oncoming rig. Shirts police ticketed the driver, who eyewitnesses say appeared to be in a hurry. I don't want to think about what mayor could have been if that unit wasn't there. That unit served its purpose at that particular time and no one else was hurt. Till this one's back in service or replaced, the battalion chief says Schertz has another platform truck and has mutual agreements with area fire departments. He says this should serve as a reminder to drivers whenever they see emergency vehicles at the scene to slow down and move over to help avoid accidents. They need the room and it's the law. 442, 48 degrees. Billie Eilish is about to take on James Bond. Still to come, what we know about the new theme song. Plus new images of a missing girl in South Carolina. After the break, the latest on the search in our GMA First Look. Welcome back. Your time now is 445. The search is intensifying in South Carolina for a six-year-old girl who just seemingly vanished. ABC's Marcus Moore has details in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, surveillance cameras capturing what authorities believe are the last images of missing six-year-old Faye Swetlick. I was in the store and the mother came in the store with her phone and asked the, the cashier, did you see my daughter? Did you see my daughter? The South Carolina six-year-old getting off of her school bus Monday afternoon, seen here wearing a black t-shirt with the word peace written on it. And this morning, an all-out search is underway. Multiple agencies, including the FBI, going door to door, focused on bringing that six-year-old home. We have received a lot of those videos, and our investigators are working around the clock to go through those videos and look for leads and inv information that will lead us to bringing Faye home. And coming up at 7 a.m., the family speaking out with your GMA First Look. I'm Marcus Moore, ABC News, Columbia, South Carolina. If you work in an office, you may be familiar with the battle of the thermostats. Oh, boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, <laughs> are we around here. Some people are always hot, and others are bundled up in sweaters year-round. Sounds familiar. 12 Year Sides Marilyn Moritz has ways to make life a little more comfortable. It's a problem of indoor work life. Office temperatures are sometimes unpredictable and often out of our control. It's like a freezer in here. Pretty cold. Sometimes workers are forced to take matters into their own shivering hands. If your building allows it, a small space heater can warm up your office. The safest place to put it is on the floor, not your desktop. And always plug it directly into the wall don't use an extension cord and keep it at least three feet away from any combustible materials. Consumer Reports tested space heaters for office use. Top ratings went to this slimline model from Comfort Zone and this oscillating heater from Lasco. Remember, though, to always turn a heater off when you leave, even if it's only for a short meeting. Another problem, dry winter air. A personal humidifier can help. An overheated office can dry out your nasal passages and your skin. Personal humidifiers work well in small rooms, and we found most of them are easy to maintain. Consumer Reports' top choices are this Hunter, which runs quietly, and the Well at Walgreens, which automatically shuts off when it's empty. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. How I deal with the cold temperature around here is I have a heating pad. Yes, and sometimes you use it as a blanket. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much every day. <laughs> 448, 48 degrees. Nick, how's traffic looking this morning? It's looking great, Leslie. No accidents right now, so that's good news. We still have some construction going on on 37 southbound, and this 37 construction is uh, taking a long time to clear up. Just keep in mind, this could still be there too as well. Eastbound I-10 off-ramp to Crossroads and eastbound Northwest Loop 410. That construction may be there. Uh, I'm going to keep it up there just a little bit longer. Usually it kind of clears up around this time, especially last week. Here, 37 at Goliad. This is so, that looks like they have a three lane shut off on 37. They're diverting traffic all the way to that far right lane. Expect a little delay if you are heading that way because it looks like it's stretching from Goliad to Indian Hills all the way to 410. So all southbound 37. Taking a look at other parts of the city. We have the more construction there, 37 Indian Hills, 35 North at Loop 410, 281 at Hildebrand looking really good, and uh, 35 in Loop 1604. Saw that coming out right now. Don't know if that's an accident yet or not, or just an uh, officer on a traffic stop. Nonetheless, be very careful when approaching that vehicle, um, you know, just to make sure everyone's safe there. Thank you, Nick. Sorry the thermos was uh, in your chair. I'll 
I'll take care of this. I'm glad I didn't sit on it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it's all bent because you dropped it and stuff. Yeah, I'm going to replace it. Yeah, the, this has uh, been through thick and thin here at, uh, at Case Hat 12. Um, so the trusty. Put some caution tape on there. We're going to have to have a memorial service one day. Yeah, so he's bringing yeah, me a replacement. One, one of the woes we have here in the studio is because this is just a big empty room. It's about two stories tall. It's what? size of about two racquetball courts or bigger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I don't know where the, the actual thermometer is for the thermostat, but right. it, because it's either freezing or it's cold. Right. So. Yeah, I don't think there is a thermostat. There's a little button well, thing over there, but there. that's that's it. Anyway, anyway, enough about us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we hope you're comfortable at your home right now. Uh, <laughs> and to be comfortable, a jacket is a good idea this morning yes. because we're in the 40s and then it's only going to be in the upper 50s later on today, but lots of sunshine. So if you are in the sun, it's going to feel a whole lot better. You get in the shadows on a day like this. It's like, ooh, good idea to have that jacket handy. We are going to have a spectacular sunrise this morning and 48 degrees here in town. Subtract 10 going out in toward Kerrville at 38 already. 47 New Braunfels and 46 down the road at Stinson little bit of a breeze, not much. And so with the very, very light wind out there, clear skies, dry air, that means we've got good radiational cooling and especially tonight. So that allows the cooler, heavier air to sink down here to the surface. And that's why temperatures will probably drop down a few more degrees. So there's all the moisture that we had yesterday. And now dry air has moved on in here. It also upstairs in the atmosphere, which means we're going to have those vivid blue skies. It's going to be a gorgeous day today. Tomorrow's not going to be too bad either. It's going to be a beautiful, beautiful Valentine's Day. Uh, 35 is the uh, dew point temperature right now, which is okay. We've got this northerly flow around here. It's going to stay very nice. As a matter of fact, we'll dry out a little bit more tomorrow morning, which will help with temperatures getting a little cooler tomorrow morning. And then the wind shifts around out of the uh, east to southeast as we go into tomorrow night and Saturday. Now, it's not going to be a huge return of moisture in the overnight hours into Saturday, but during the day, we'll start to see a lot more uh, moisture, a lot more humidity come back on in here. That's going to help with the clouds. We'll have a kind of a mixture of sunshine and clouds on Saturday and then a lot more on Sunday. But for today and, and tomorrow, I mean, basically, there's nothing out there. Uh, it's just going to be, like I said, plenty of sunshine, good looking sunrises, good looking sunsets and kind of a different story. I said as we go in toward the uh, the weekend as far as satellite radar picture nothing is showing up there and you go off to the west and this is what's in store for us for at least the next couple of days we do have uh, some rain chances coming in here once we get into uh, maybe late Sunday, but especially the first part, at least the first half of next week, and then a really big cold front. Uh, looks like it's setting, uh, it's setting up to come through here sometime late Tuesday into Wednesday of next week. But today, 52 degrees at noon, and then a high temperature today up to 57. So it is going to be on the cool side by anywhere from about 5 to 10 degrees. Good looking day, though. A little bit of a breeze. So yeah, there's going to be just a hint of a wind chill out there down to 34 tomorrow, which means a good hard freeze in parts of the hill country. 60 for a high temperature, still slightly below normal, but a gorgeous, gorgeous day. And then on Saturday, we are going to have more clouds around. Still a, a cool morning getting up to 65. So that's about a normal uh, day or maybe a few degrees below that. Sunday, much, much warmer, uh, more clouds, maybe a shower or two, a couple of showers. Monday, Tuesday, big front moves on through here. Only in the mid 50s, some showers on Wednesday. It's going to be windy and then another cold morning Thursday morning of next week. Hearts and presidents and roses. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Oh. Right now it is uh, 453, 48 degrees. Next to your spotlight news, things are getting chilly. We're going to preview Will Ferrell's new comedy. Maybe we ski the beast after lunch. Julia Louis-Dreyfus and Will Ferrell are ready to hit the slopes. The movie Downhill features the two comedy stars as a married couple whose relationship cracks while on vacation after Ferrell's character abandons his family to save himself during an avalanche. That was a very easy scene for me to play because I let people down constantly. And if there is crisis, I run away. Yeah. Downhill is in theaters this weekend. When you're top dog, the world is handed to you on a silver platter. And if you're the newly crowned best in show winner at the Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show, that silver platter contains chicken. Seba, the standard poodle, dined at Sardi's in Manhattan Wednesday after her victory, where her handler, Crystal Murray Class, talked about how she gets Seba show ready. With the hair, you just have to keep it brushed, uh, conditioned. Um, it's not really until you come up to the show that you really have to start styling it. And um, she runs a lot at home. Three-year-old Seba will now be retired from show life, and eventually she'll pop out some pups. 
The wait is almost over for Billie Eilish's take on James Bond, the Grammy-winning singer's theme for the upcoming 25th 007 film, No Time to Die, will drop today at 4 p.m. Pacific time. And he'll probably put out those birthday candles with a sledgehammer. Singer Peter Gabriel is 70 today. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. 457, 45 degrees. Coming up in our next half hour, the songs you'll need if you're looking for love this week. We're breaking it down in your morning tech bite. Plus, some simple ways you can have a heart healthy Valentine's Day. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Now on GMSA, an arrest in a local murder investigation. Sarah Costa is live with new details on the case. A late night confrontation, then gunfire. We're in the courtroom for what prosecutors say sparked a deadly shooting. Mid 40s out there as we're looking back towards downtown where we're sitting right now to get your day started here on GMSA. Good morning. It is Thursday. It is February 13th. One day till Valentine's Day. So get busy. If you haven't gotten your gifts yet for your loved ones. You have some time. It's just going to you're going to have some company today if you head to the store. That's going to be busy. But at least you don't have to worry about rain as you're heading to the store sure. on the road or whatever this morning because it's nice out there. It is beautiful out there. A little on the cool side, but just getting down to uh, just about a normal uh, low temperature. Right now we've dropped down to 45 degrees some 30s in parts of the hill country and mm, a little bit of a breeze out there. So maybe a slight bit of a uh, wind chill to deal with. Not too bad, though. And uh, temperatures around the area right now. Uh, again, we're dropping down to roughly normal readings. 49 in uh, Floresville, 44 up the road in New Braunfels, and 38, pair of 38s out there in Comfort, as well as in Kerrville, 39 in Lost Maples. And wind chill, there's a little bit of a breeze out there, not much. So basically, we've got the really the, the perfect ingredients for radiation cooling. Clear skies, dry air, light wind. That allows uh, temperatures to continue to cool down. So we'll drop down a few more degrees in the next uh, couple of hours. Molds on the low side. Most everything else got washed out by uh, the rain that we had the other day, yesterday, I should say, we picked up uh, just shy of two thirds of an inch of rain officially out there at the airport. So back to today's weather, clear and chilly this morning, sunny, beautiful, but coolish later on this afternoon. We're going to make it up into roughly the upper 50s, mid to upper 50s around the area, maybe a couple of uh, 60 degree readings. Very cold start tomorrow, down close to freezing here in town, definitely freezing in the hill country and then beautiful again. Still coolish in the afternoon, warmer um, over the weekend and more clouds, especially on Sunday, maybe a stray shower late on Sunday, but overall I think the weekend looks very nice, maybe not as picture perfect as the next couple of days. Got a Big cold front, another one down the road. We'll talk about that coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. Thanks, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great morning. No accidents right now to report, and it looks like that construction may be clearing up on 37, so that's good news. Let's take a look at some drive times. If you're on 1604 eastbound from US 281 to I-35, nine minutes. And if you're on 1604 westbound from I-35 to US 21, eight minutes. So that's really good times there. Taking a look at the trans guide now. 410 at Austin Highway went wet quick. 10 in Callahan's looking really, really good. Traffic's picking up a little bit. 10 in Frio inbounds and outbounds is looking very light right now, which is good news. And 10 in Loop 1604 on the northwest side looking great. So I'll keep you updated on any other accidents right now. It's looking good. Mark, Leslie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. The alleged killer of an SAISD teacher was arrested late last night. That teacher, Amy Sebron, was shot at her apartment on the northwest side at the beginning of the month. Sarah Costa is live at Public Safety Headquarters with more on this story. Sarah, do we know what charges the suspect is facing? Good morning, Mark. Yes, police say that suspect is facing charges of murder and assault with a deadly weapon. That man police arrested last night is 25 year old David Don Juan. Police believe he is responsible for killing SAISD teacher Amy Sebron on February 1st at the park at Wall Street Apartments. That's in the 11,000 block of Wall Street near Vance Jackson and Hebner. Police say Don Juan allegedly knocked on the 33 year old teacher's apartment door. And then when she answered, he opened fire on her and a man in the the apartment. That is what the male victim told police. That man was also critically wounded in that shooting, police say. Don Juan was tracked down by police through surveillance video. He was arrested on the northeast side near Perrin Beidel and 410 yesterday. Cell phone records put Don Juan at the apartment the day of the shooting, police say. 
Glee said that Sebron and Don Juan knew each other and had been in communication days before the shooting, but the relationship isn't clear. As for a motive of why Don Juan shot her and that male victim, that has not been established. Also, D police say that Don Juan did not cooperate with them yesterday. Live from Public Safety Headquarters, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. It's a murder the prosecutors say stemmed from a love triangle. The attorney for William Perkins, the man on trial, didn't dispute the fact that his client and the victim's wife had been having an affair. Told our Paul Venema that the shooting was justified and explained why. A late night confrontation, then gunfire. When the smoke cleared, 34 year old Jonathan Ashford lay dead outside this east side strip center. 41 year old William Perkins admitted he fired the shots, six in all. It's a classic case of self defense. Pat Hancock is Perkins' attorney. Though prosecutors call it murder, he insisted that firing six shots was justified. You have a right to. Uh, uh, exercise your right to self-defense and uh, shoot until the uh, risk or the or the threat is uh, taken care of. Perkins and Ashford's wife Stacy had been having a physical affair, he says, but claimed it had ended and the couple was only phone friends at the time of the shooting. She testified that prior to the shooting, there were threats. The deceased um, had threatened our client prior to the date of the shooting, and my client was aware of that. Clearly, a murder that was the result of a love triangle, according to prosecutors. It's human drama, and uh, some of this stuff plays out in the courtroom, um, and this jury will just have to sort through uh, the drama and, and the factual basis of what's going on. Hancock was reluctant to name his witnesses. He said that'll come later in the trial, probably before week's end. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Paul Venema. A cruise ship that was turned away elsewhere over coronavirus fears has now anchored off of Cambodia. The cruise ship currently checking the health of its 2,200 passengers and crew. A Cambodian health official says around 20 passengers have fever or stomach aches, though they are not thought to be related to the virus. U.S. Ambassador Patrick Murphy said the embassy will work with the ship's representatives and Cambodian officials to help Americans reach their destination. Happening today, closing arguments will begin in the sexual misconduct trial of Harvey Weinstein. He has been on trial in New York since January after two women accused him of rape and assault. Four other women have testified and accused him of similar behaviors. Weinstein faces up to life in prison if convicted. He also faces similar charges in Los Angeles. The accusations against him led to the start of the Me Too movement. Right now it's 507, 45 degrees. Still to come, the world's biggest smartphone trade show is not happening because of the coronavirus. That's coming up in your consumer news. Back here at home, a new partnership to test some big projects here after the break, what that means for you. And live cam giving us a peek outside, a little bit chilly, you need a jacket this morning. It's gonna be a beautiful day though. We have a couple of nice days in store. You're gonna love the Valentine's Day forecast. A new R&D League will soon be testing projects right here in San Antonio. The city's Office of Innovation unveiled a new partnership with USAA, UTSA, and Southwest Research Institute. It will allow for testing projects meant to help the community. Some of those projects will include putting sensors on solid waste vehicles to collect data on potholes, using artificial intelligence to monitor traffic, and creating a city portal for ideas. The city says it will allow them to tap into expertise they don't have. For their partners, it's been really neat to see how much they can do on their campus, but there's still opportunity for them to continue to learn by coming into the city, into our streets, learning from our departments, how things work in a, a city as a living lab. There are six projects to start and they will begin rolling them out in the next few months. Right now it's exactly 512, 45 degrees. Just ahead, the most popular messaging service is revealing just how big it's become. Details in your morning tech bites. And on the eve of Valentine's Day, could all that chocolate be good for your heart? After the break, some simple choices you can make that actually can be good for you. I even begin to tell you how bright you shine, how strong you are, how brilliant 
unique. How you're my rock, my diamond. For the diamond in your life, there's only one diamond store. It's the Valentine's Day sale. Get 25% off everything, including these special deals. At sales, the diamond store. Mommy, we made your princess toast. Oh, I have no idea what's in princess toast, but thanks to this USP sale, I know exactly what's in my Nature Made gummies. Nature Made has the first gummies verified by USP, a nonprofit organization that sets purity and potency standards. Get sick too. Protection. Lysol laundry sanitizer kills 99.9% .9 of illness causing bacteria, detergent leaves behind. Lysol, what it takes to protect. Each year, 36 million heart shaped boxes of chocolates are sold to show your loved one how much you care. You may not know it, but with each box, you may be helping your loved one's heart. Several studies have associated eating dark chocolate with a lower risk of heart disease. But as our Stephanie Cerner reports, that's only, only, not the only thing you can do for your honey's heart. Oh. What are your plans for Valentine's Day? Probably just a nice dinner and um, go out for drinks or something. You know, every day is Valentine's Day for us. Maybe we need to plan this year. We have the perfect heart healthy plan. Start the day early with a couple's run. Just a 20 minute jog on a regular basis can decrease your risk of heart disease by 35 to 55 percent. Pack a special loved filled lunch box full of healthy foods like a salad or dark leafy greens. Kale and spinach are rich in vitamins A, C, E and K. Top it off with some chicken. A three 0.5 ounce serving is only 165 calories. And don't forget the side of blueberries packed with love and heart healthy nutrients. And don't forget the most important ingredient, whether it's a date night out or romantic evening in, have fish for dinner like salmon or tuna. Fatty fish are loaded with omega 3s, which have been studied extensively for their heart healthy benefits. And after dinner, almonds and walnuts are a great heart healthy treat. Now you can cover them with dark chocolate and get twice the benefit. And another great way to start the day is to bring your partner coffee in the morning. One study found that drinking coffee was linked to a lower risk of heart failure, stroke, and coronary heart disease. Stephanie Serna, KSET 12 News. A major tech conference has been canceled over fears of the coronavirus. ABC's Kenneth Moten and Kimberly Brooks have details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, the world's biggest smartphone trade show canceled because of the coronavirus. Yeah, the World Mobile Congress was set for later this month in Spain. Organizers announced the cancellation after major tech companies like Amazon, Sony, and Facebook pulled out of the event over fears of the virus's spread. Facebook's WhatsApp messaging service now has more than 2 billion users. That's up from 1.5 billion users just two years ago. The company's CEO is promising to defend its fully private form of messaging. That's despite growing pressure from lawmakers around the world. Next, the songs you'll need if you're looking for love this week. Yes, yeah, Spotify has released its list of the most streamed songs on Valentine's Day. Ed Sheeran's Thinking Out Loud is number two. And number one streamed song on Valentine's Day, All of Me by John Legend. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Thank goodness it's not Boy George, Do You Really Want to Hurt Me? <laughs> right? Going into Valentine's Day? Heartwarming thought, isn't it? 518, here is Officer Nick Solis. I, I mean, that, to, to have that pop in your head yeah, is so disturbing, I can't even <laughs> describe. You're welcome. Oh, well, the traffic's right heartwarming to me, yeah. Mark. Like, everything's looking good out here. No traffic accidents to report. Things are off to a great start this Thursday morning, so that's good for everyone. Drive times. If you're on 35 southbound from the city of New Braunfels to 1604, it's 16 minutes. And if you're from there down to downtown, 11 minutes, so not bad there. Uh, let's take a look at the transit guy. 281 in Grayson looking great. 10 in Loop 410 looking even better. 10 at Austin Highway. The northeast side was good. 10 at the Y looking even better. And let's see what else we have here. 410 in Morrison, the southeast side looking very, very light at this time. So that's good there. Any other little romantic ballads you can nope. think of there? No, I, I um, don't. I hope everybody I'm just, has I'm a little. I'm worried about you a little bit. I, I am too, but I hope everybody has a lovely Valentine's Day weekend. Mm -hmm. I'm okay, Mike. Love hurts. <laughs>
<laughs> See, I feel better now. I have company. Cupid 1 and Cupid 2 over here. Uh, <laughs> yesterday, we picked up some beautiful rain around the area, officially out there at the airport. It was just shy of uh, two-thirds of an inch, but it looks like about a, uh, roughly an inch and a half of rain in that rain gauge there, southern part of Canyon Lake. Yeah, very good rain. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. Make sure you keep those KSAC Connect pictures coming on in here. We're going to have a beautiful sunrise this morning. We've got clear skies out there right now. It is cool, but this is about normal, which you would expect for the uh, middle of February. 41 in Bandera, Lotus 45 at the airport, and 44 up the road at Canyon Lake, and uh, a couple of 38s up there at Kerrville, as well as in Comfort. We may drop down a few more degrees because we've got uh, very dry air, clear skies, and not much of a breeze. A little bit of a kind of a puff of wind out there, and so there's a slight wind chill, but that's not too much. So it's not really keeping the atmosphere that stirred up, and so that will allow the uh, heavier, cooler air to sink down here to the surface. We've got dry air upstairs in the atmosphere. This darker shade of gray and even that kind of tannish color means it is bone dry upstairs, and that means we're going to have some beautiful blue skies out there. And it's going to stick around not only today, but also tomorrow. Now, by late in the day tomorrow, we are going to start to see the wind shift around. It's not really going to pull in that much humidity initially, but overnight into Saturday and then throughout the day on Saturday, these numbers are definitely going to go up, these dew point temperatures. And so that's going to help out with more clouds around here. That's going to help to hold uh, low temperatures up, especially going into Sunday morning. Now, for the next couple of days, though, just nothing going on. I mean, here's the uh, satellite and uh, radar composite and go upstream and nothing out there. It's just going to be beautiful today as well as tomorrow. As far as dew point temperatures, though, as I was talking about, it's definitely going to start to go up. We stay in about the low to mid 60s, so you definitely start to feel it by especially Sunday and then Monday. However, this is going to be dropping like a uh, first hill on a roller coaster going into the middle part of next week because we do have another very strong front moving on through here. It's going to be, it looks like overnight Tuesday into Wednesday, so it'll be very mild Tuesday, almost kind of, you know, Monday and Tuesday shorts and flip flops and then back to some pretty hefty coats by the middle of next week. Today we're going to be just enjoying beautiful sunshine out there, but it's going to be coolish. So light jackets, not a bad idea throughout the day. 52 at noon, plenty of sunshine out there. Northeasterly wind at 10 to 15 miles per hour and then 57 for a high today, which is about well, anywhere from five, almost 10 degrees below normal should be in the mid 60s now this time of year. Tomorrow morning, very cold. We're going to be down close to freezing here in town and then uh, getting up to about 60 in the afternoon. Plenty of sunshine, beautiful Valentine's Day, coolish and be down to 40 by Saturday morning. More clouds around here, a few more clouds Saturday, more clouds on Sunday, maybe a stray little sprinkler or two or even uh, some mist or drizzle in the morning. 77 on Monday, 55 on Wednesday. Oh, your two little hearts in the road. Lovely. So sweet. Thank you, Mike. You're such a romantic. Just like us, two hearts in a rose. Or we're the thorns with the roses. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, yeah. We know who the thorny ones are. 522, 45 degrees. Don't laugh, Nick. <laughs> Just ahead, why the music of Ed Sheeran will soon be putting your babies to sleep. If it doesn't already. In the spotlight this morning, we'll soon be seeing Honey, I Shrunk the Kids star Rick Moranis again. Hasn't made a live action movie in more than 25 years, but according to several reports, we will see him back soon. He's coming back for an update of that movie called Shrunk. Josh <laughs> Gad stars the son of Moranis' character trying to be a scientist just like his father. Oscar winner Natalie Portman is getting into children's literature. Her debut will be Natalie Portman's Fables. It's a retelling of the classic stories of the tortoise and the hare, the three little pigs, and the country mouse and the city mouse. And it will be out in October. Some of Ed Sheeran's biggest hits are now songs for your baby. The new album is called Lullaby Renditions of Ed Sheeran, a set of baby-friendly versions of his songs. Kids of all ages can hear more when the album arrives February 21st. Okay, fun little factoid. I'm listening. Uh, a few years ago, I was with friends in Nashville, Tennessee, okay. and we were at this this bar, and we met these people from England, and they had this private music company, and we just started talking. Turns out, he discovered Ed Sheeran. Really? And they were an independent, small little music company, and they got his first recordings, and then, of course, you know, people loved him, and then the big company signed him, and, and he went, but they're still friends to this day. I was like... That's pretty cool. That's Were you like, cool hey, stuff. show me a picture? And you're like, they're like. And yeah, they did. Yep, I believe they're it. They're still friends to this day. And I was like, 
That's so fun. Uh, it's amazing who you can meet. 526, 45 degrees. Here's a look at what's coming up in our next half hour. You may still be wiping the sleep out of your eyes, but things are already rising around here. We're inside a kitchen that never sleeps. The smell of Cinnabons is enough to wake up even the sun in the middle of the night. That's when Joseph Talamantes and his crew start cooking the morning treats behind the counter at San Antonio International Airport. Here, breakfast is served as early as 3.45 in the morning. I'll show you how they get ready in this week's While You Were Sleeping. Top of the morning to you. It's Thursday, February 13th. I, I thought maybe it was St. Patrick's Day for a minute. No. no Top no. of the morning to you? <laughs> <laughs> Where's that coming from? Just, Somebody the, just wound him up today. the two of you. <laughs> I know. That's what happens when we have a lack of sleep. Yeah, it's not coffee or anything else. It is uh, purely, what, are they, what do they call it when you're like on vapor? Or fuzzy. And, yeah, fuzzy. Hey, Nick's right here and he's got an update Hi, on Nick. traffic. Hi, Leslie. Traffic. Hi, Mark. Mm -hmm. well, things are looking good right now. We're up to a good start here today, so no accidents right now to report and the construction's going. Okay. Don't yeah. be afraid. Everything's okay. You're lucky because Marcus had his hands full yesterday because the roads were wet. Yeah. Oh, definitely. really? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Not today. No, Thank not you. today at all. <laughs> Commute's going to be uh, fantastic. You just make sure you have a coat and sunglasses, and you might want to keep a jacket handy throughout the day because we're not going to warm up all that much throughout the rest of the day. But it's going to be beautiful sunshine out there. Temperatures are going to be in the uh, we're low to mid 40s right now. A couple of upper 30s will drop down a few more degrees in the next couple of hours and then only 57 for a high temperature, but plenty of sunshine. So yes, it is going to be beautiful. You get in the shadows kind of kind of nippy out there. Mm -hmm. uh, take a look with live cam right now and obviously we're not seeing any sort of hint of the sunrise yet, but it is going to be like I said, a pretty one today. Sun comes up officially at 7.15 this morning. So in just about, what is that, an hour and 45 minutes. We'll wait. 37 right now. Comforts drop down a little bit. 42 in Balverde, 44 New Braunfels. And there's a hint of a breeze out there. Wind chill. It's not a big deal, but just enough to add kind of a little nip to some of these temperatures. Feels like 32 right now over there in Lost Maples. Uh, it was nice that the rain yesterday, it was great to see the rain washed a lot of the allergens out of the atmosphere. Still have a little bit of mold showing up. We've got beautiful weather today as well as tomorrow. The weekend is nice, maybe not quite as pretty. We'll talk about that. Another big front down the road. Time saver traffic right now. So no big problems or anything out there? What do you see? Uh, no, not right now. Uh, like everything's looking really good. So uh, known accidents off to a good start. And that's good news for all you out there heading to work right now. So let's take a look at the trans guide. Here we go. T 410 and Morrison to the southeast side looking great. Very light traffic out there. 10 at Comfort. Wow, it's pretty far. It's a nice camera. I know we had a visual all the way out there. It's good. 10 at Bernie, uh, Bernie West looking very, very light. That's good. And let's 10 in Callahan. It's all pretty much uh, the northwest side looking very good right now. So all around the city, things are looking great. And I hope you're having a great start to your morning. Mark, Leslie, back to you. Thanks, Nick. Well, now to the latest this morning on a man arrested in connection with the shooting death of a San Antonio Independent School District teacher. 25-year-old David Don Juan was arrested last night. He's facing charges in the death of Amy Sebron. Happened back on February 1st at the Park at Wall Street Apartments. Investigators were able to track him down with surveillance video. Our Sarah Costa is following this developing story. She'll actually have a live report coming up in our next half hour. Happening this morning, the city of San Antonio and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention are holding a news conference about the coronavirus. When KSAT 12 asked several sources if there was a confirmed case here in San Antonio, we were told they could neither confirm or deny that. The news conference is scheduled for 10 a.m. We, of course, will have a crew at this morning's press conference and provide you the very latest information as soon as we get it. Well, today the City Council is voting to decide the future of pre-K for San Antonio. City Council will vote to decide if the one-eight cent sales tax, which helps fund the program, should be on the ballot in May. The tax was approved back in 2012. It expires next year. Pre-K for SA still needs money, though. According to the Bearfax KSAT Rivard Report poll, more than two-thirds of people said they support extending the tax. Still no sign of Faye Swetlick. The six-year-old disappeared earlier this week, shortly after returning home from school. Authorities have released new images in connection with the case. CNN's John Lawrence reports. This is the last known video of Faye Swetlick. The six-year-old is seen getting off her school bus in Casey, South Carolina. I 
investigation is, is comprehensive. We're not ruling out anything at this point. Another piece of surveillance of two vehicles in the area around the time Faye was last seen was released by police. We're hoping that the public can get out there, watch those videos, and, and give us some information and put us in contact with those people. According to investigators, there's been no evidence that Faye was abducted, which is why no Amber Alert has been issued. They say Faye may have wandered off or got hurt and is in need of help. The lack of information is why authorities say getting in contact with the people inside those vehicles is vital. We don't know what they have to offer, and until we know what they can offer us, we're gonna, that's where we're putting our resources right now. About 250 law enforcement officers are involved in the search, and Faye's family and friends are hoping for a happy ending. And all the people that are out watching and, and walking and looking, and it's just it's incredible. I want my baby bag. We gotta find her. Authorities say Faye's father, mother, and the mother's boyfriend are all cooperating. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Well, today will be the first time the Houston Astros will face the media at spring training since the sign stealing scandal. The scandal forced the team to fire their general manager, Jeff Lunau, and manager, A.J. Hinch. An investigation found the Astros players watched signals through a center field television camera during Houston's run to the 2017 World Series and again in the 2018 season. There are several lawsuits being filed against the Astros organization because of that scandal. Michelle Obama getting another school named after her school board uh, in Northern California. A school board in Northern California has voted to rename one of its elementary schools after the former first lady. It was originally named after President Woodrow Wilson when it was constructed in the 1920s. It will be the second elementary school in California to be named after Mrs. Obama. And an elementary school in Panorama City is also named after her. 536, 45 degrees. So to come, how you can get your hands on a new delicious kind of footwear. Plus a new promise from BP after the break, what they say they will do within the next 30 years. And live cam giving us a peek outside. You need a jacket. It's a little bit chilly out there this morning. It's not going to warm up too much, but it is going to be a beautiful day. Welcome back, everybody. It's now 539. In your morning consumer headlines, BP has pledged to reach net zero emissions by 2050. It's part of a plan by the company's new CEO, Bernard Looney, to transform the legacy of the oil giant. Details are limited, but the aim is to cut greenhouse gas emissions from its global operations and emissions from the oil and gas it produces by 2050. During that time frame, BP also plans to cut the carbon intensity in half. Dirty Lemon is hitting Walmart shelves. The low-calorie beverage was originally sold by text message or online only. A one-time purchase of six bottles costs $65. That's about 11 bucks a bottle. But at Walmart, the drink will be cheaper. Each bottle will cost $6.99. Retailer plans to sell three Fridays. Dirty Lemon, Charcoal, Dirty Lemon Collagen, and Dirty Lemon Ginseng. How do they come up with a name Dirty Lemon product oh, and it's selling? <laughs> All right, here's another one that's going to scratch your head, make you scratch your head. It's a partnership that you never knew you needed, or maybe even wanted. Crocs and Kentucky Fried Chicken have joined forces. The footwear company and fast food chain have created, get this, the KFC X Crocs Bucket Clog. It's a limited edition shoe, and it's covered in a fried chicken print. The base has the iconic KFC red stripe bucket look, and it comes with two attachable charms that look and even smell like fried chicken. The shoe will be available in unisex sizes this spring, and it will cost you $59.99, which means it will cost you $60. Bucks. Oh, there, is that it right there? Okay, that is... Are you kidding me? Is that, that really it? Yeah, that's it. And people are going to buy it. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, okay, I see. So it does look like chicken, and then there's the bucket thing going on. Wow. And then there's the little charms that it look like... $60 for chicken, those? And, and they smell like chicken? I, I, I don't know. Uh, they definitely are, are a horrible. fashion <laughs> choice. Some people would argue Crocs were already ugly enough that's before this happened. Perhaps. But they are comfortable. But they are comfortable. But that's perhaps mm. the ugliest shoe I've ever seen. And they've got us talking, which is what they wanted. And they're going to sell out. Of people aren't going to buy that. Of course they will. She's going to get a pair. I am not getting a pair. 
Get them and then sell them on eBay for markup. 541, 45 <laughs> degrees. Such the entrepreneur. While you were sleeping, the series continues this morning. Just ahead, we're going to head to the airport where some people are cooking things up while you're getting your Z's. It is puppy time, and Alexis is here from the San Antonio Humane Society. And these two little ones, I mean, what a pair. I know, they are, they are great. So we have here is Miss Rory and Miss Kim. They are obviously chihuahuas. Mm -hmm. um, Rory's about 12 years old, and Kim is about eight. And as you can tell, they love their little sweaters. They love dressing up. Um, so warm and cozy, because yes, you're, you're not shivering like little chihuahuas. Hello, yes, that, <laughs> you're going to get that tongue sunburned dried out there. So. <laughs> yes, and so they are really great. Rory's the more adventurous one of the two, um, but you know I think they make a great pair, and so uh, they actually do need to go home together. So I want to let uh, let the community know to come on by and visit and, them. And when they're this small, I mean, together they don't even equal one big dog, you know, exactly. as far as size wise. So and they do, you take care of them, take care of each other, so they'll keep each other. Yes, companions. yes, they're little companions. They love it. Okay, you have a wish list? <clears throat> yes. So, and it's an um, easy wish list, too. It is. It is an easy wish list. So our shelter's in need of a couple of supplies, and we made it really easy for y'all. We have an Amazon wish list that you can find online. Um, go to sahumane.org, and then go to uh, Ways to Give, and then we have an Amazon wish list. We have, like, heating pads for the puppies, dog food, cleaning supplies, things like that. Um, really easy to donate. Um, you can do it online, or you can bring it down by the shelter. Um, other ways to donate would be to foster you know we're gonna mm -hmm. be having you know if mama kittens come, mama cats come in with kittens and puppies um, that need like a safe home to to grow up and all that um, fostering is a great option along with volunteering coming on by the shelter and walking our pups and just hanging out and showing them some love yeah but if you want to go to the uh, wish list and the nice thing about that is too I mean they appreciate any sort of donations <clears throat> yes. but it's exactly what you want yes. and what you need exactly if it's the, what the, we need. the right size bowls or like you said the heating pads mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. just a couple of clicks and it goes right to them. You don't even have to worry about stopping by. But if you would like to stop by and check out these two little ones, and again, they are they're a match set, so they're going together. <laughs> 4804 Fredericksburg Road, 226-7461. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Cute wheel puppies. I-46 right now. Long before travelers take flight from San Antonio International Airport each day, other people are preparing to give them a lift. They whip up breakfast foods to give passengers that morning boost. Trina Weber recently spent some time inside the kitchen of one airport terminal food vendor while you were sleeping. A quick glance around tells you it's well past bedtime for San Antonio's airport. Throughout the terminals, there's barely a sound to be heard. Uh, of course, the oven keeps a little bit of the smell going and the vents open. Other senses, though, are wide awake thanks to the aroma wafting from this kitchen. At an hour while many people are asleep, I said, a lot to do, not too much time to do it. A lot is brewing at Auntie Anne's, much at the hands of a man named Joseph Talamantes. It's normal every day someone's here making the biscuits, making some Cinnabons and uh, getting everything prepped to open up at 3.45. To make sure they're ready for early travelers, the shift manager and a handful of workers arrive in the middle of the night. Just cut. In the place known for pretzels, they put a different twist on the morning menu. Mounds of dough become the basis of breakfast sandwiches. And then these will just rest on top of the oven for about 15, 20 minutes. And the staple of sweet snacks. At this hour, they usually have the kitchen all to themselves. No one's in the way. You're just working at your own pace, moving around. As I said, that's usually. This time, with his insistence, I also dug into the dough. Working the shift isn't exactly easy, but Talamanta says he manages to roll with it thanks to a recipe of his own. Just a good night's rest. I, I usually go to bed around 4. I wake up around 10, 30, 11 o'clock. So by the time I come in, I'm wide awake. He gets a jump start on his workday while it's still night to help travelers fill up and get on their way. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Why am I suddenly craving cinnamon rolls? Or pretzels. I have no idea. 548. Let's check the roadways. Any problems out there, Nick? Now, Leslie, things are looking great out here still. Good start to our Thursday morning. No accidents out there. Traffic definitely starting to build up all at all parts of the city, um, but still looking pretty good if you are heading to work right now. Let's look at these commutes. 
uh, 35 southbound from the northeast side of 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes. And if you're northbound 35 from the southwest side of 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes. Still really good times. Now we have from the city of New Braunfels to 1604, 16 minutes. And from 1604 to downtown, 11 minutes. Great times there. Let's take a look at the trans guy. 35 of Ben Zingleman. Look at that. Traffic is definitely building up there. I didn't see an accident on the screen. I don't know why there, we have all that congestion there. I'm going to try to find out, but right now it is uh, pretty backed up on 35 and Ben Zingleman. I don't know if that's north or southbound. I'll call my friends at Transguide to find out that because that does not look good right now no. if you're heading there. Ugh, 35 Ben Zingleman. Avoid, avoid, avoid. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Yesterday yeah. it was so messy at this time. It was, uh, it, but we got, you know, on the, the plus side, we got some beautiful rain mm -hmm. out of it. So a lot of folks anywhere from, say, half an inch to maybe inch and a half, couple of inches. Much especially needed. further up to the north, uh, about uh, almost two-thirds out there at the airport. Nothing like that today, just nothing but uh, beautiful blue skies. I love this picture, and the caption says, a northern mockingbird coming down to check out the bird pond. Beautiful shot. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. Love those kind of shots. Uh, as you can see, we've got clear skies. A couple of stars are showing up out there right now. Going to have a great sunrise. 39 degrees now up the road in toward Bernie. 37 Comfort. 45 at Randolph. 37 also in Lost Maples. And a little bit of a breeze. Not much, just enough to uh, trim temperatures down to 32 in Lost Maples and uh, 39 is what it feels like in Helotus. Wind out of the north primarily or no wind really to speak of. And so that's either giving us a hint of a wind chill or allowing temperatures to really drop down because we've got, you know, clear skies as you saw on the uh, live cam and also dry air, light wind, good radiational cooling, and then very, very dry air upstairs in the atmosphere. This is some of the uh, moisture we had yesterday. That's moving on out, obviously, and just a uh, bone dry air behind it. So that means we're going to have some beautiful blue skies today as well as tomorrow. Just a couple of picture perfect kind of days. A little on the coolish side though. As far as humidity, it's going to stay low throughout the rest of today as well as tomorrow. As a matter of fact, it's going to be even lower tomorrow morning. That's going to help uh, temperatures drop down into the probably low 30s here in town and 20s out in portions of the hill country. Then we go into uh, the overnight hours Friday into Saturday, and the winds are really going to start to shift out of the southeast. Now, we'll start off pretty good on Saturday morning, but we'll definitely see more humidity come back into the picture, and that's going to help with the cloud cover. We'll see a few more clouds on Saturday, call it a mixture. Uh, of sunshine and clouds and then Sunday cloudier skies may even see perhaps a little bit of a mist in the morning and then the slight chance for a couple of showers late in the day on Sunday. But back to today and the next couple of days tomorrow and early Saturday, nothing is really going on upstream. The opposite end of the picture, boy, it is just a mess out there as you get uh, kind of east of the Apple or east of the uh, Mississippi River with a bunch of snow and a bunch of rain. Now, as far as we're concerned going into the weekend, as I mentioned, uh, the humidity is going to be going up and dew points will really start to notice them by especially late Sunday into Monday as well as Tuesday. And then the bottom is going to be dropping out with another front that moves on through here. And it's going to be a fairly potent front. It's going to be very blustery on Wednesday with temperatures maybe only in the low 50s and kind of rainy. So get the grilled cheese and soup ready for next week. 52 degrees today at noon. Plenty of sunshine out there. An absolutely spectacular day. 57 for a high temperature, which is on the cool side by a good uh, 5, almost 10 degrees in some areas. And then we go into tomorrow. We're going to be starting off at uh, 34 here in town. So a lot of freezing temperatures. Definitely a good hard freeze in the hill country. Beautiful sunshine, though. Great looking Valentine's if you're going out with your Valentine Friday evening should be a very pleasant evening. Uh, 40 starting off Saturday morning, mid 60s, mid 70s Sunday, upper 70s Monday, mid 50s Wednesday. Wow, that's a big difference. Wednesday's gonna be one of those, you wanna throw the covers over your head days. Okay. Right now it's 553, 45 degrees. If your tummy's starting to rumble, we may make things a little harder on ya. When we come back, it's all about cheesy goodness because National Cheddar Day. Your lottery numbers pick three, nine, four, zero, fireball three, daily four, two, three, nine, nine, fireball two. And your cash five numbers, four, 10, 13, 14, 19, lotto numbers, two, six, seven, 10, 28, 38. And your powerball numbers, 14, 47, 54, 55, 68, 25 is the powerball with the power play of two.
Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the urgent search for that missing six-year-old girl in South Carolina. Police releasing surveillance video of her on the school bus just moments before she vanished. Now the FBI is joining in on the case. You'll see it coming up right here on GMA. Makes your mac and cheese gooier and your burger, well, better. We're talking about cheddar cheese. It's National Cheddar Day. Cheddar cheese accounts for about a third of all varieties sold here in the United States. 2020 is just the second year the iconic cheese has been celebrated. Oregon cheesemaker Tillamook founded the day uh, to mark its 110-year anniversary of making cheddar cheeses. Enjoying the day is sort of a no-brainer. Enjoy. About three till right now, 44 degrees. We have a lot more coming your way in the next hour of GMSA. Just to add the latest on coronavirus and a preview of today's news conference here in San Antonio, Erica Hernandez is standing by with what you need to know. And so is Officer Nick Solis. Time saver traffic coming up as we take a look at Transguide. Looking around the Alamo City on this busy Thursday morning. The alleged killer of an SAISD school teacher is now behind bars this morning. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa. In just a bit, we'll bring you that story. The city of San Antonio and the CDC will be holding a news conference today about the coronavirus. Health officials neither confirming nor denying a case in the Alamo City. We will have the latest. And taking a look outside with live cam, much different picture than it was yesterday. No rain to worry about this morning. It is a little bit cool out there, though. You probably need a jacket. Mike Ash forecast coming up. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It's Thursday, February 13th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. Don't forget, you only have one day left till Valentine's Day, so get to wherever you're going to get your presents. You may have some company today. Probably a lot of company today, but you don't have rain to deal with today as you head out on the roads. Nope, not at all. Just like you said, a little bit on the cool side. Take your sunglasses. It is going to be a spectacular day. Beautiful all day long. Plenty right. of sunshine. Tomorrow is going to be every bit as pretty, although an even colder start. Temperature right now, 40 44 at the airport, 43 Randolph, down to 36 now at Comfort and 38 right now in Hondo. There's a little bit of a breeze, not much, but you know, with these temperatures down in the 30s and 40s, it doesn't take much to shave a couple of notches off of temperatures. Feels like freezing in Lost Maples and uh, 31 is the wind chill right now in Hondo. And as far as allergens, not much of anything out there. Mold was on the low side yesterday, although all the rain did wash a lot of the aller most all of the other allergens out of the atmosphere, which not too bad. And it may be coming to the end of uh, mountain cedar season. There was a little bit the other day, but none showing up. We'll wait and see for the updated count coming out in about an hour or so. Temperatures are going to be uh, maybe dropping down another few degrees in the next couple of hours and then plenty of sunshine. We'll warm up nicely, making it up to the low 50s by noon and then only the mid to upper 50s later on today. So it is going to be still on the coolish side. Plenty of sunshine, though. Great looking sunrise today and sunset. We do it all again tomorrow. The weekend, a little bit milder, maybe not as picture perfect. We'll talk about that. Another big front down the road. Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Nick Solis and still got that big thing going on on what, 35? Yeah, well, I found out that it's actually a build up from Bamsey. So it oh, okay. uh, looks like it's a kind of the routine kind of thing that happens every now and then. So if you do see some traffic build up on 35 northbound right after Ben Zingleman, if like the exit ramp going to Bamsey, just know I guess it's something uh, that they are working on there. It's routine and uh, it should get cleared up here, but just expect a little delay. It's all the way in the far right lane. All right, let's take a look at some drive times. If you're going 35 southbound uh, from the northeast side of 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes, and uh, 35 northbound from the southwest side of 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes as well. Good times there. All right, let's take a look at the trans guide. 410 and Austin Highway. Traffic definitely starting to pick up there. 10 at the Y. Things getting a, a little lighter in that side of town, but still picking up. 410 and more in the southeast side looking very slow right now and let's do one more here we got 10 and comfort far far west not a car in sight mark leslie back to you thank you sir an alleged killer is behind bars this morning accused of shooting and killing an saisd's teacher this month earlier this month amy sebron died at her northwest side apartment in the 11,700 block of wall street 
near Vance Jackson. Sarah Costa is live at Public Safety Headquarters. Sarah, do we know how police were able to track this suspect down? Good morning, Mark. Police say they were able to use video surveillance footage to track down who they believe shot and killed 33 year old Amy Sebron who's a teacher with SAISD. Late last night, police arrested David Donwan, who is 25 years old near Perrin Beidel and 410 on the northeast side. On February 1st at the park at Wall Street Apartments in the 11,000 block of Wall Street near Vance Jackson and Hebner, police say that Don Juan allegedly knocked on the 33 year old teacher's apartment door opened fire on her and another man that was in the apartment. And that's according to a male, the male victim that survived that shooting. That's what he told police. That man was also critically wounded in the shooting, police say. They say cell phone records put Don Juan at the apartment the day of the shooting. Police say that Sebron and Don Juan knew each other and had been in communication days before the shooting, but the relationship isn't clear and neither is a motive. Now, Don Juan, the alleged shooter, is facing charges of murder and also assault with a deadly weapon. Live from Public Safety Headquarters, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. City officials are expected to hold a news conference today regarding the coronavirus. And there's also a concern that Fiesta could see fewer medals due to factories in China closing. Erica Arnett just joining us now with more on those stories. Erica, what is this news conference about today? You know, at this moment, we still are unsure about what this conference is all about. Now, yesterday, KSAT 12 was told by a source that it is regarding the coronavirus situation at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland. That news conference is scheduled for 10 a.m. this morning at Municipal Plaza. Now, we also asked those Sources, whether a case had been confirmed at Lackland and they could neither confirm or deny it. 91 evacuees from China arrived at the base last Friday for a 14 day federally mandated quarantine as a precaution against the virus. The evacuees have been kept separated at the Gateway Inn and Gateway Villa on the base, fenced off and watched by U.S. federal marshals. Again, that press conference is at 10, 10 a.m. and will be streamed live on KSAT.com. There's also a new concern here in San Antonio regarding the coronavirus, and it has to do with Fiesta medals. The owner of Monarch Trophy Studios, Charlie Drago, told KSAT yesterday that while most medals are made at his location, the process to get the medals is facing some uncertainty. After several factories in China closed due to the spread of the deadly virus, he went on to say that if workers there in China are, un are unable to go back to work, that there will be fewer Fiesta medals this year. For more on these stories and the latest on coronavirus, visit KSAT.com. We'll have more on today's press conference later on GMSA at 9. Mark Leslie. Thank you very much, Erica. 606 right now. It's a murder that prosecutors say stemmed from a love triangle. The attorney for William Perkins, the man on trial, didn't dispute the fact that his client and the victim's wife had been having an affair. Told our Paul Venema the shooting was justified and then explained why. A late night confrontation, then gunfire. When the smoke cleared, 34 year old Jonathan Ashford lay dead outside this east side strip center. 41 year old William Perkins admitted he fired the shots, six in all. It's a classic case of self defense. Pat Hancock is Perkins' attorney. Though prosecutors call it murder, he insisted that firing six shots was justified. You have a right to uh, uh, exercise your right to self-defense and uh, shoot until the uh, risk or the, or the threat is uh, taken care of. Perkins and Ashford's wife Stacy had been having a physical affair, he says, but claimed it had ended and the couple was only phone friends at the time of the shooting. She testified that prior to the shooting, there were threats. The deceased um, had threatened our client prior to the date of the shooting, and my client was aware of that. Clearly, a murder that was the result of a love triangle, according to prosecutors. It's human drama, and uh, some of this stuff plays out in the courtroom, um, and this jury will just have to sort through uh, the drama and, and the factual basis of what's going on. Hancock was reluctant to name his witnesses. He said that'll come later in the trial, probably before week's end. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Paul Venema. 
In your morning headlines, the U.S. Senate is expected to pass a war powers resolution today to limit presidential powers. Legislators are taking these actions after President Donald Trump ordered the killing of Iranian General Qasem Soleimani five weeks ago. The bill would limit President Trump's ability to take military action, and it does have bipartisan support. President Trump tweeted, quote, this is not the time to show weakness. Closing arguments will begin in the sexual misconduct trial of Harvey Weinstein today. He's been on trial in New York since January after two women accused him of rape and assault. Four other women have testified accusing him of similar behavior. Weinstein faces up to life in prison if convicted. The accusations against Weinstein led to the start of the so-called Me Too movement. Well, a new study says the 2010 BP Deepwater Horizon oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico was far bigger than originally estimated. According to the study in the journal Science Advances, some of the oil was invisible to the satellites that tracked the spill. If the spill itself was about 30 percent larger than originally estimated, the study also says the oil reached the coast of Texas, the Florida Keys, and parts of both east and west coasts of Florida. BP is declining to comment on the current study. 609, 44 degrees. Some music is made for lovers. We're going to see what some of the top songs are on the Spotify playlist for Valentine's Day. And speaking of Valentine's Day, those chocolates could be good for your heart. We'll take a look at other ways that uh, other ways you can be heart healthy, rather, on Valentine's Day as well after the break. But first, let's take a look outside with live cam. Friday Eve, everybody. So happy to have you with us. We'll be back. Welcome back. It is now 613. Each year, 36 million heart-shaped boxes of chocolate are sold to show your loved ones how much you care. You may not know it, but you may be helping your loved one's heart with each box. Several studies have associated eating dark chocolate with a lower risk of heart disease. But as our Stephanie Cerner reports, that's not the only thing you can do for your honey's heart. What are your plans for Valentine's Day? Probably just a nice dinner and, um, go out for drinks or something. You know, every day is Valentine's Day for us. Maybe we need to plan this year. We have the perfect heart healthy plan. Start the day early with a couple's run. Just a 20 minute jog on a regular basis can decrease your risk of heart disease by 35 to 55 percent. Pack a special loved filled lunch box full of healthy foods like a salad or dark leafy greens. Kale and spinach are rich in vitamins A, C, E and K. Top it off with some chicken. A three 0.5 ounce serving is only 165 calories. And don't forget the side of blueberries packed with love and heart healthy nutrients. And don't forget the most important ingredient, whether it's a date night out or romantic evening in, have fish for dinner like salmon or tuna. Fatty fish are loaded with omega 3s, which have been studied extensively for their heart healthy benefits. And after dinner, almonds and walnuts are a great heart healthy treat. Now you can cover them with dark chocolate and get twice the benefit. And another great way to start the day is to bring your partner coffee in the morning. One study found that drinking coffee was linked to a lower risk of heart failure, stroke, and coronary heart disease. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. And speaking of health, a new Wallet Hub study ranks the healthiest cities across the United States. Out of 174 cities across the country, San Antonio ranks 103, what? however, as the fifth healthiest city on the Texas list. Austin is the healthiest in the Lone Star State, ranked 11. Then Plano at number 40. Houston is at 82. Dallas at number 92. Several Texas cities are down at the very bottom of the list. Loretto and Brownsville ranked 173 and 174. Meanwhile, San Francisco, Seattle, and San Diego are the three healthiest in the country. Wallet Hub, which publishes, publishes rather the list every year, uses 43 key indicators of good health. Some include the cost of medical visits, fruit and vegetable consumption, and fitness clubs per capita. Let's check on the roadways and see how your traffic's looking on this Thursday morning. Hey, Nick. Hey, good morning, Mark. Good morning, Leslie. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great Thursday morning. We are off to a wonderful start here. No accidents to report. I've been watching the screens very closely. Things are looking good out there if you are heading to work. Let's take a look outside. 37 in Jones. Traffic starting to pick up just a little, but still looks very good. 281 and 410. Look at that. Looking very great right now. Or <laughs> looking great, not very good. US 281 at Grayson um, looks very smooth right now. Let's do one more here. 10 at Crossroads. Traffic is looking light. So that's good news for everyone if you are heading out to work right now. Thank you, Nick. Appreciate it. So we're for a couple nice days. A little cold, but yeah. nice.
coolish, but yeah, fantastic. I mean, it's just going to be gorgeous out there. And this is on the heels of getting some beautiful rain as well. We kept talking about how we picked up uh, just about two thirds of an inch out there at the airport. And this is another uh, part of town. Don't know exactly where, but this rain gauge got a good one inch of rain, which was fantastic. And that puts us above normal for the mm -hmm. month and even going back into uh, January the first of January. So that's always good news. We've got clear skies right now. And again, sunrise is just going to be one of those picture perfect kind of sunrises today. 44 here in town, 36 comfort and 35 right now in Lost Maples. A little bit of wind chill though. Feels like it's freezing Lost Maples as well as in Hondo and 37 is wind chill up the road in Balverde. Not much of a breeze, but enough when you have these cold temperatures doesn't take much. And overall, though, with the very light wind, clear skies, dry air, that's why temperatures are dropping down. It's going to be even colder tomorrow. We won't have much of a breeze at all, and we'll have even drier air. Now, speaking of dry, it's bone dry upstairs in the atmosphere. So with this dark shade on the uh, water vapor imagery, which uh, shows mid, upper level, mid and upper levels of the atmosphere, that's why we're going to have beautiful blue skies all day long today. The humidity, which will stay low throughout the rest of today as well as tomorrow, that's why it's going to be so pretty and so comfortable out there. But as we go into tomorrow night and Saturday, the wind really starts to shift around to the southeast. Now, we'll still start off really nice on Saturday, but then the humidity is going to be increasing throughout the day and especially going into Sunday and Monday. That's going to help out with the cloud cover and with all this extra humidity getting pumped in here, especially even Saturday night into Sunday. There could be a little bit of, uh, you know, some of that mist and drizzle early Sunday morning as well as Monday and maybe even a shower late Sunday and into Monday and Tuesday. Then the bottom is going to drop out because we've got another very strong front that's going to be moving on through here by the middle part of next week. This is what the upper level steering winds look like right now. Big chunk of cold air up here to the north of us, and we've got this kind of northerly flow in behind all that the front that moved through, and that's why we're on the coolish side of things, and that stays around through tomorrow. Then we start to get a little milder, more moisture coming in here in all the layers of the atmosphere with that southwesterly flow Saturday and Sunday, and that's why we might actually see a little bit of a sprinkle or two. Then notice how this next big trough is starting to dig here, and that's what's going to be moving through by the middle part of next week, and that's really going to cool us down. Pretty good, uh, pretty good chunk of cold air is going to be coming on in here by mm, throughout the day, I should say, on Wednesday, and then by it looks like right now Thursday morning of next week, we're going to be down close to freezing once again. 52 today at noon, sunny skies. Just a good looking day today, and then a high temperature of only 57. So it is going to be on the chilly side today. So the coat's still a fairly decent idea, sweatshirt, something like that. Tomorrow morning, really cold, 34 degrees, but beautiful for your Valentine tomorrow. I'm trying to wax romantic here. Your voice changed. It did. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 65 on Saturday, 75 on Sunday, much milder. And then we go into next week, we go from upper 70s to low 50s. How long have you and Bonnie been married now? 20, it'll be uh, 23 years in June. What are you doing for your bride? Tomorrow, Valentine's Day. We're Saturday, not, we're going out. Oh, you want we're Saturday? Going Saturday? Yeah, we're gonna go Saturday. So. Okay. That's Singles Day, I think. Right now it is six night. Not that you guys are. Six <laughs> because after getting up at two o'clock in the morning tomorrow morning, I'm usually asleep by. Ah, that's, that's fair. That's, that's true. Yes. Yeah. Hey, six nineteen, forty four degrees. The search is intensifying in South Carolina for a six year old girl who disappeared. Find out more in your GMA first look after the break. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it right now on KZ.com for your chance to win a twenty five dollar gift card from We Are Circle K. Needles, essential for the sea urchin, but maybe not for people with rheumatoid arthritis because there are options like an injection. Zelgens XR, a once daily pill for adults with moderate to severe RA for whom methotrexate did not work well enough. Zelgens XR can reduce pain, swelling, and further joint damage even without methotrexate. Zelgens can lower your ability to fight infections like TB. Don't start Zelgens if you have an infection. Taking a higher than recommended dose of Zelgens for RA can increase risk of death. Serious, sometimes fatal infections, cancers, including lymphoma, and blood clots have happened, as have tears in the stomach or intestines, serious allergic reactions, and changes in lab results. Tell your doctor if you've been somewhere fungal infections are common, or if you've had TB, hepatitis B or C, or are prone to infections. 
needles. Fine for some. But for you, one pill a day may provide symptom relief. Ask your doctor about Zelgen's XR, an injection. In this morning's GMA First Look, surveillance cameras capturing what authorities believe are the last images of missing six-year-old Faye Swetlick. I was in the store, and the mother came in the store with her phone and asked the, the cashier, did you see my daughter, did you see my daughter? The South Carolina six-year-old getting off of her school bus Monday afternoon, seen here wearing a black t-shirt with the word peace written on it. And this morning, an all-out search is underway. Multiple agencies, including the FBI, going door to door, focused on bringing that six-year-old home. We have received a lot of those videos, and our investigators are working around the clock to go through those videos and look for leads and inv information that will lead us to bringing Faye home. And coming up at 7 a.m., the family speaking out with your GMA First Look. I'm Marcus Moore, ABC News, Columbia, South Carolina. The world's biggest smartphone trade show has been canceled because of fears surrounding the coronavirus. World Mobile Congress was originally planned for latest month in Barcelona, Spain. Organizers announced the cancellation after major tech companies like Amazon, Sony, and Facebook pulled out of the event over fears of the virus's spread. Facebook's WhatsApp messaging service now has more than 2 billion users. That's up from 1.5 billion users just two years ago. The company's CEO is promising to defend its fully private form of messaging. That's despite growing pressure from lawmakers around the world. Here are some of the most popular songs you'll need if you're looking for love this week. Spotify has released a list of its most streamed songs on Valentine's Day. Ed Sheeran's Thinking Out Loud is number two. The number one streamed song on Valentine's Day, All of Me by musician John Legend. Your time now, 625, 44 degrees outside. San Antonio City Council members have an important vote today that could impact pre-K for SA. We'll take a look at what the vote is and how many people support it. You may still be wiping the sleep out of your eyes, but things are already rising around here. We're inside a kitchen that never sleeps. The smell of Cinnabons is enough to wake up even the sun in the middle of the night. That's when Joseph Talamantes and his crew start cooking the morning treats behind the counter at San Antonio International Airport. Here, breakfast is served as early as 3.45 in the morning. I'll show you how they get ready in this week's While You Were Sleeping. SAISD teacher was shot and killed earlier this month. The alleged shooter is now behind bars. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa. We'll tell you the charges that man is facing. After New Hampshire, three Democratic candidates have a full steam ahead, but the field is still wide open. I'm Andrew Dimber in Washington with the latest on the race for 2020. Health officials will have a news conference in San Antonio this morning about the coronavirus. At this time, nobody's confirming or denying if there is a positive case here in the Alamo City. We have a picture perfect sunrise starting out there. It's hard to tell from this camera right now, but we've got another couple of shots we want to show you coming up. Good morning. It's Thursday. It's the day before everybody has the store and gets those chocolates and flowers and everything. It is February 13th. Yes, it's also Friday Eve, which we love. What? Got a question for you. For again, we had this question the other day on the show. Would you rather have flowers or candy? I'd like my favorite thing, chocolate covered strawberries. Okay. So instead yeah. of flowers. So it's kind of a I'd option. rather have chocolate flowers. Option three. Yeah, she's going to go with three. Yeah. yeah. That's my favorite. About which you, is kind of candy because it has chocolate, right? Yeah. Nick, you look like the kind of guy that would love to get like a bucket of beef jerky from, from your wife for Valentine's Day. You know what, man? It'd really hit the spot, maybe? Buffalo wings. Buffalo wings? <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So hopefully she's watching. And if, you, and if you put two next to each other, they kind of form a little heart shape there. So you go, <laughs> now you're thinking, so. Mike. Now you're thinking. Let's get a heart uh, tin and stuff it full of buffalo wings. Right. <laughs> so yesterday morning, uh, a mess on the roads of, of magnificent proportions. Today, much easier situation for you. <laughs> I bring good luck. I bring good luck. <laughs> 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 well, you're on. Oh. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was bad, wasn't it? Yeah. But right now, I, I can tell you right now, things are looking good on the major highways. We have one major accident right now. That's it. Other than that, I bring good luck today. Do me a favor. Yeah. <laughs> tell them to leave me alone. <laughs> Epically cosmic, <laughs> catastrophic proportions. That's hey, right. Uh, oh, are we gonna have a glorious sunrise? <laughs> I think it was Stupendous. A Friday round here. It's okay. got to start with a. Yes. People need to hear what the weather is okay. going to be like. Uh, 43 degrees this morning. It is going to be on the cool side. And uh, later on today, 57 for a high with plenty of sunshine. So it's going to be an absolutely gorgeous day. Here's what live cam looks like right now. And yes, there we are starting to see the 
glow of the sunrise, which is just beautiful out there. Maybe a, a couple of clouds right there along the uh, horizon way off in the distance. 44 in town, 37 Bernie, 42 Tarpley, and just uh, kind of flirting with freezing up there in portions of the hill country. And it does feel like it. Hondo and Lost Maples, a little bit of a breeze. Wind chill is at 40 here in town as well as in Castorville. And the allergens... Everything was washed out of the air with that uh, rain yesterday. Mold is still on the low side. The updated count's going to be coming out in uh, about a half an hour, 45 minutes or so. Great looking today as well as tomorrow, the weekend. We'll talk about that coming up. Time saver traffic right now. And we had that one incident uh, near Bamsey earlier. Is that still going on? Yeah, it looks like that's died down. We okay. got one accident now only, Mike. That one right there holding on Northwest 36 and Mayberry, I believe. Uh, one accident. Uh, looks like SAP is just uh, on scene. So I'll get you updated on that here. Just looking at the map, though, you can see 35 southbound starting to uh, all the way past 1604 and going towards uh, 410 is starting to back up a little bit. So expect a delay if you're uh, heading 35 south. Um, just uh, north up there of 1604. This is the accident I was talking about. Northwest 36th Street at Mayberry Avenue. Um, only been about 10 minutes since this accident uh, came out. Hopefully they get it cleared here soon. Let's take a look uh, outside. 35 in Benzing. This is, this, is, this is what Mike was talking about. Still stalled there. 35 and 37. That's looking great. And uh, 35 at Evans. Look at that. Uh, traffic's definitely starting to pick up there on 35, like I said. And 35 at Loop 410. Um, is looking moderate right now. So I'll keep you updated. Hope everyone's having a great day. Mark, Leslie. Thank you, Nick. The person accused of shooting and killing a San Antonio Independent School District teacher is behind bars this morning. Amy Sebron was shot at the beginning of the month in her northwest side apartment. Sarah Costa is live at Public Safety Headquarters. Sarah, do we know if the alleged shooter knew Sebron? Good morning, Mark, and police say they did know each other. They had been talking a couple of days before that shooting happened, and now police have arrested her alleged killer. That's 25 year old David Don Juan, who police arrested just after 10 o'clock last night. He is being charged with murder and aggravated assault of a deadly weapon. That man police believe is responsible for killing SAISD teacher Amy Sebron on February 1st at her apartment complex, the park at Wall Street Apartments in the 11,000 block of Wall Street near Vance Jackson and Hebner. Police say Don Juan allegedly knocked on the 33 year old teacher's apartment door and opened fire on her and a man in the, in her apartment as well. That male victim in critical condition after that shooting. Don Juan was tracked down by police through surveillance video. With the assistance of our tag unit, SWAT, our repeat offenders detectives, as well as Eagle, they were able to locate him on the northeast side of town. He was arrested on the northeast side near Perrin Bidal and 410. Police say cell phone records put Don Juan at that apartment complex the day of the shooting. And police say that Don Juan was not cooperating with investigators when he was arrested last night. Live from Public Safety Headquarters, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. Well, the city of San Antonio and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention will hold a news conference on the coronavirus this morning at 10. A source told KSET Steve's Priester this was not a pre-planned news conference or update. When he asked several sources about whether a case has been confirmed here in San Antonio, he was told they could neither deny or confirm that. We will have a crew at this morning's press conference and we'll provide you the latest information as we get it. In the meantime, make sure you download our KSAT app for push alerts. Check KSAT.com for updates as well. And don't forget, just watch our newscasts. Also happening today, San Antonio City Council will make a decision, a big one, regarding pre-K for SA. City Council members will decide to, if a one-eighth cent sales tax should be on the ballot in May. The sales tax approved back in 2012 and expires next year. It helps fund pre-K for SA. The organization says it still needs the money. Pre-K for SA offers free and reduced price pre-K education, professional development for educators, and grants that support students and other programs. According to the Bearfax KSAT Rivard Report poll, more than two-thirds of people say they support extending that tax. The Democratic presidential candidates will have some big battles in the next few weeks. Pete Buttigieg and Senator Bernie Sanders are fighting to be the so-called front-runner in the Democratic primary. Meanwhile, Senator Amy Klobuchar has new momentum after a strong finish in New Hampshire. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more from Washington. 
After the New Hampshire primary, it's Bernie Sanders leading the Democratic PAC by a hair. But ahead of the Nevada caucuses, the Culinary Union, one of the most influential voting groups in the state, launched a campaign against him, saying he wants to end health care for workers. Uh, and in fact, many of the unions are strongly supporting of the Medicare for All single payer system. Now, Mayor Pete Buttigieg, who came in second in New Hampshire and claimed his own victory in Iowa, is sharpening his attacks on Sanders. I don't think that uh, uh, even progressives uh, really want to be in a world where uh, we can't keep our promises. As others attack him, controversial right-wing radio host and recent Medal of Freedom recipient Rush Limbaugh fired off anti-gay comments targeting the former mayor. A gay guy, 37 years old, loves kissing his husband on debate stages. Can you see Trump have fun with that? Back on the trail, Amy Klobuchar, who placed a surprising third in New Hampshire, is reintroducing herself to voters. Hello, America. Waiting in the wings, billionaire and former New York City mayor Michael Bloomberg shaking up the race while shaking off criticism. What do you say to Democrats who argue that you're trying to buy this election? I'm not trying to buy the election. Uh, we've been at this for 10 weeks, and the best ways to communicate in 10 weeks is through something like mass media, through television and social media. Next up for the candidates, the Nevada caucuses and Democratic officials there said that they are working around the clock to make sure they avoid the issues we saw in the Iowa caucuses. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. Today will be the first time the Houston Astros face the media as spring training since the sign stealing scandal. The scandal forced the team to fire general manager Jeff Lanau and manager A.J. Hinch. An investigation found Astros players watched signals through a center field TV camera during Houston's run to the 2017 World Series and again in the 2018 season. There are several lawsuits being filed against the Astros organization due to the scandal. Well, tomorrow is Valentine's Day, and there, uh, there's plenty of content on KSET.com if you are looking for something to do or even gift ideas. Erica Hernandez joining us now to break it all down. It starts first with Valentine's Day itself. Yeah, no, or, 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 sorry, Galentine's. 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 Okay, we had this problem with David Sears on Monday. Do you not know what Galentine's Day is? No, especially if you're reading it early in the morning and you think it's a typo. <laughs> so, <Okay>. No, <laughs> no it's a real Galentine's. Thing. Galentine's. Has okay, it's a thing. I got it's it. A I real promise. Thing. Okay. Yeah, okay. Let me. Let me. I'll help you out here. Thank you. Well, right now we have an article up that talks about all the val Galentines, anti-Valentines, and single awareness parties taking place in San Antonio this week. Bars and restaurants around San Antonio are hosting a variety of parties where locals can spend time with the ones they love or you know, just on their own. Today, there are Galentine's Day events, because today is Galentine's Day, today. the 13th. The day today. before okay. Valentine's yeah. is Galentine's. Yes. Tomorrow is anti-Valentine's Day events around town, and Saturday, you can celebrate Singles Awareness Day. Now, there's actually plenty of events to keep you busy each day. One of those events, if you are feeling a little heartbroken Aww. this year, is called Shred Your Ex at Bowl and Barrel. The boutique bowling alley is inviting singles to bring in a photo of their ex to shred. The full list of events on KSAT.com. I guess that's therapeutic. <laughs> Whatever works. Huh. And finally, we have a whole page dedicated to Valentine's Day. There are craft ideas, last minute gift ideas, date night ideas. We have you covered. There's also a great story on there on how you can make a card for a child who's in the hospital this Valentine's Aww. Day. It can all be done online. Also, you still have time to enter our KSAT 12's cutest couple contest. All of that on this page. You can find it by going to the Valentine's Day link under the features. Okay. What, you have any plans? Are y'all ready for tomorrow? No, no, no. Yeah, we're going to uh, cook fajitas. Just me and Tony and yeah. Nicole. And she's doing a big Galentine's thing with her girlfriends today. Yep. Yeah. Well, happy Galentine's Day. There you go. I got it. Thanks, Erica. Got you covered. <laughs> 640, 44 degrees. Over we're over here now. I, I, Breakfast is the most important meal of the day, even for travelers. We're going to see how employees at the airport whip up some morning munchies while you were sleeping. Long before travelers take flight from San Antonio's airport each and every day, there are people preparing to give them a lift. They whip up breakfast foods to give passengers that morning boost. Katrina Weber recently spent some time inside the kitchen of one airport terminal food vendor while you were sleeping. A quick glance around tells you it's well past bedtime for San Antonio's airport. Throughout the terminals, there's barely a sound to be heard. 
Uh, of course, the oven keeps a little bit of the smell going and the vents open. Other senses, though, are wide awake thanks to the aroma wafting from this kitchen. At an hour while many people are asleep. I said a lot to do, not too much time to do it. A lot is brewing at Auntie Anne's. Much at the hands of a man named Joseph Talamantis. It's normal every day someone's here making the biscuits, making some Cinnabons, and uh, getting everything prepped to open up at 3.45. To make sure they're ready for early travelers, the shift manager and a handful of workers arrive in the middle of the night. Just cut. In the place known for pretzels, they put a different twist on the morning menu. Mm -hmm. Mounds of dough become the basis of breakfast sandwiches. And then these will just rest on top of the oven for about 15, 20 minutes. And the staple of sweet snacks. At this hour, they usually have the kitchen all to themselves. No one's in the way. You just working at your own pace, moving around. As I said, that's usually. This time, with his insistence, I also dug into the dough. Working the shift isn't exactly easy, but Talamanta says he manages to roll with it thanks to a recipe of his own. Just a good night's rest. I, I usually go to bed around 4. I wake up around 10, 30, 11 o'clock. So by the time I come in, I'm wide awake. He gets a jump start on his workday while it's still night to help travelers fill up and get on their way. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. He rolls with it. She's so clever. Yes, yeah, she is. 646, 44 degrees. Let's check on the roadways. How's it looking out there? Hey, Leslie, it, it's uh, definitely got busy here in the last uh, 10 minutes or so. Got a lot of accidents to go over, so let's get to it. First one right here just came out. Look at that traffic build up westbound IH 10 West at Ralph Fair Road. If you're going towards Bernie, this accident's already causing some uh, major delays. We have some uh, trans guide footage of it. Expected delay if you're going westbound I 10. We have this accident. It's North Ellison Drive at Petrenko Road. Now it might be on private property. It might not. Nevertheless, uh, it usually gets very busy on that intersection because Stevens High School is right there. We also have this accident eastbound I 10 East at Foster Road. This was involving an 18 wheeler. Uh, reports said it was blocking three lanes. I don't see it. How, I don't see it on the map causing traffic buildup yet, but I'll keep you updated on this accident. And we're still working on this accident. Northwest 36th Street at Mayberry Avenue. Here's the accident I 10 at Ralph Fair. If you look at the right side of the screen, you can see those two vehicles disabled in that far left lane and uh, vehicles are having to get around it. Uh, I have not seen uh, any uh, Police units dispatched to it yet. Hopefully they get there fast because it's going to cause some delays, especially going towards uh, Bernie. It's a mess. All right, we know you'll keep us posted. Thank you so much, Nick. All right, so a couple of beautiful days in store. Yep, and it's going to be just cool enough. You know, once the sun starts to go down, it's really going to cool off quickly. And so a nice maybe little uh, fire, a little outdoor Ooh, romantic stove going on here. Curl up with the pup there because Memphis yeah. was enjoying quite evening Aww. after some of that lightning. And Great dog yeah, name. Look at Memphis that with the little white face Aww, there. Puppers. A little golden retriever. I'm a sucker for golden retriever. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Beautiful. Speaking of beautiful, look at that sunrise. Uh, a little bit of uh, some clouds way off in the distance right there along the horizon, but obviously we've got this clear skies, dry air upstairs. I mean, this is going to be one of those days with just that intensely beautiful blue sky. 44 in town, 40 Balverde, 39 Bandera, 35 at Comfort and Lost Maples, and wind chill temperatures knock a few degrees off. It's not overly breezy out there, just enough to kind of send some of those colder temperatures down the, the back of your collar if it's not turned up tight and wind out of the north at eight miles per hour. It's not going to be overly breezy at all today. But again, with temperatures only in the 50s, a little bit of a breeze adds that kind of nip to things. There's the uh, dry air upstairs in the atmosphere, this darker shade of gray and even that kind of uh, tannish color there, which means beautiful blue skies. That's what that translates into. We are going to stay on the very pleasant side as far as humidity is concerned. Dew points will remain in the 30s today, throughout the day, tomorrow. But then by uh, tomorrow night and Saturday, the wind really starts to shift around out of the southeast. Now, we'll start off Saturday pretty good, but the humidity and moisture dew points are definitely going to start to come back into the picture and we're going to be seeing uh, enough humidity to put those dew points up there in the uh, 60s and even mid 60s by late Sunday Monday and a lot more clouds chance for some rain with little disturbances coming on through here and then that's all going to be changing throughout the day on Tuesday with another fairly potent front that's going to move on through here this is what's going on right now we've got this north to northwesterly flow that means 
great weather around here. We start to get a little bit milder going in toward the weekend. Somewhat of a uh, southwesterly flow is going to develop and that's going to help with the cloud cover around here. And then going into the first part of next week, there's the next front which is shaping up and we get this next trough moving on through here and that's going to pull down a fairly potent front, but it looks like we may have a little bit of overrunning still, which means we're going to have a lot of clouds around as well as some showers. So Right now it's shaping up next Wednesday to be one of those cold, wet, windy sort of days. Today, just beautiful, 52 degrees at noon. Lots of sunshine out there and 57 for a high temperature today, so kind of on the coolish side. Cold tomorrow morning down to 34 in town. Obviously a good hard freeze in the hill country. And then we're going to warm up nicely up to 60. Beautiful days, especially for Valentine's. Tomorrow night's going to be nice as well. Saturday, 65. Mixture of sun and clouds, more clouds Sunday. A couple of showers are possible, maybe even a little mist in the morning. And then a few showers starting off next week. And the temperature's going to be dropping like a rock by Wednesday. All right. Thank you. 10 till 7, 44 degrees. Well, your census is going to arrive in the mail pretty soon. Join us tomorrow on GMSA to hear about... It, the census, how important it is, and how Bear County is making sure everyone fills it out. You are starting your day the right way with GMSA outside with Ligam. There's that uh, sunrise we were talking about a little bit earlier in the newscast. It's going to be a beauty. We'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the urgent search for that missing six-year-old girl in South Carolina. Police releasing surveillance video of her on the school bus just moments before she vanished. Now the FBI is joining in on the case. You'll see it coming up right here on GMA. The city of San Antonio and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention will hold a news conference on the coronavirus virus this morning at 10 o'clock. Now, a source told KSAT Steve Spreester this wasn't pre-planned or an update. When we asked our sources about whether the case, a case has been confirmed in San Antonio, he was told they could neither deny or confirm it. We'll have crews at this morning's press conference and we'll provide you the latest information as we get it. In the meantime, make sure you download our KSAT app for push alerts. Check KSAT.com for updates and of course, watch our later newscasts. Coming up today on GMSA at 9, the museum celebrating its five-year anniversary this week. Hard to believe. Alicia Barrera visited the Kids Museum for a look back at the progress made and a preview of what's to come. That's today at 9 after Good Morning America. 6.55, here's Officer Nick Solis with Time Saver Traffic. Good morning, everyone. We just got a major accident that came out at Southwest Loop 410 and Valley High. Currently working on this accident. I was trying to put it on the screen, but looks like it's not going to work. Uh, we have this accident westbound I-10 at Ralph Fair Road. It's definitely causing major delays, so please uh, expect a delay if you're heading westbound I-10 going towards Bernie Stage Road. We still have this accident here at North Ellison and Petrenko, and uh, this accident is trying to get cleared up on Foster and I-10. It is a gorgeous morning. Boy, a spectacular sunrise. A couple of clouds way along the horizon there, but otherwise clear skies and sunshine all day long. 42 now in town, 35 up the road in Comfort, 47 in uh, Pleasanton, and 57 at 5 o'clock today. Lots of sunshine. Good looking day. Enjoy Galentine. Thanks for being with us. Have a great day. See you back here at 9.